Well, hello again. This is uh, Javakis with an exciting new tutorial for uh, the Nod engine for uh, Vampire the Masquerade Redemption. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to convert Bloodlines maps into Redemption. And uh, this is going to be a little trial and error per se, though I have tried this before prior to this tutorial and of course I am making the tutorial based on what I've done thus far. Um, there may be some more empirical approaches uh, needed to tweak the map so that it doesn't uh, cause issues in the redemption game, but overall um, I am just going to go step by step and we'll see where we go from there. First off, tools. You're going to need tools to be able to convert the uh, redemption, uh, uh, to convert the bloodlines maps over to redemption. And of course you're going to need the bloodlines game and the redemption game to do this. Of course that is uh, an oxymoron, but uh, anyway, there it is. Um, I have made the tools uh, readily and easily available at emods.net. Um, it is under the open nod development section. I have just added something new over here. A new side panel called additional tools. And here you can get the NAM tool. This tool will create NAM files based on selected TGA files. NAM files are needed to assign textures for maps. Um, you get the pack file explorer 3.9. This is normally included in the uh, unofficial patch for bloodlines, but um, I figured to make this process easier for everyone, I have made the program separately available at the open hot development section of emods.net. This was to streamline the process and to alleviate any uh, confusions that may happen. This tool, of course, is used to uh, view files from Bloodlines, and it could read the pack files. It can also convert BSPs to X file, .x files, direct X files. Now, these files can be opened up in Soft Image Mod Tool, which I've also made available at emods.net. Um, you um, will likely uh, need to go through a bit of uh, a, a hoop jump to get it installed. I, I don't think it's uh, overly simple, but it might not merit a, a tutorial in itself. I'm not really covering the install process for this program in this tutorial. Um, if it's a problem, let me know and I will do my best to instruct you. And I've also made, this is not going to be used in this tutorial, but I have made it available at open uh, non-development. It is Payne's version of the Not Editor, which he had created in Java, and it requires the Java runtime environment to be able to use. It is a .jar file, and it it is actually a very functional Not Editor. It is, it is actually less buggy, considerably less buggy, than the original NOT editor included in the NOD SDK. Of course you're going to need the NOD SDK for this tutorial so you could just download that here as well. Should make everything uh, easy peasy to get all the tools needed to get started. You will also need Milkshake 3D. This is the final process of converting um, the uh, map over to redemption. This is the last process you will need and this actually goes to the website. This is not, I do not keep the file on emods.net. Instead you have to go to the website under downloads and do not use the beta. I would not recommend it. Just use the uh, just use the first option, the uh, uh, 1.8.4 non-beta version and uh, of course he has two mirrors, he has a local download one, local download two, so whichever works for you. Um, that's pretty much what we're going to need to get started. So um, now it's just a matter of uh, getting started. So I'm going to just X on out of here 
and um, I'm going to first go into the bloodlines uh, folder here so I can just take a yander at my uh, the potential files that I will be converting now under your bloodlines vampire directory there is a maps directory where are you there you are here you have all of these BSP files now of course I am using um, the 8.8 .8 unofficial patch so um, there might be a chance that some of these are modified um, if that's the case don't worry about it. <laughs> it it is not a big deal um, okay so it's a matter of now of figuring out what I'm going to use here. I'm going to use in this tutorial the SM Tattoo Parlor, the uh, that little uh, tattoo shop. Um, I know that this tattoo shop was already done by the upstart. Yes, there was already a project in play to convert Bloodlines maps over to Redemption. It was done by the upstart. Now I'm just going to show you how, well, a likely scenario of how he did it, though I'm pretty sure he did not use the uh, soft image mod tool. Um, I will be using that in this tutorial because um, I know it works. I verified it works. Um, the one that I have on my website works. Um, it should make it very easy to follow along with this tutorial without any confusion. Um, so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to create a project folder based off of this in the uh, redemption uh, in the redemption game folder. So I'm going to create that now, and I'm going to name it the same name as I'm going to create the uh, create the map from from Bloodlines. So. I'm just gonna put a little under slash up here so I can just see that it sticks up, sticks out, and I can see it first thing. Um, so um, now I'm going to go into the Path File Explorer and run the executable. Oh, wait, before I do that, ah, this thing has been a pain in the butt lately, so I'm going to disable this for the next hour. I'm likely going to uninstall you if you continue to give me issues. Anyway, so be sure to um, deal with your antivirus before starting this program up because it will false flag it or it will either um, put it in a sandbox mode and eventually uh, <laughs> close it <laughs> without your permission. That's always fun. Anyway, so moving on. So here I am in Pac-File Explorer 3.09. Um, so from here, I am going to go into the Bloodlines directory under Vampire and in the Maps. Okay, so I'm going to have to press the uh, plus key, I mean the plus icon next to the maps, and I'm going to navigate on over to SM Tattoo. I'm going to click on it, I'm going to right click on it, and choose copy. Now from there, I'm going to navigate to the, um, yeah, I have it down here. I have uh, Redemption installed in the same directory as uh, Bloodline, so it should be easy, at least for me, to navigate between the two games. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to right click on my project folder that I just created in Redemption. And I'm going to choose paste as d3d.x, and that is a direct 3D uh, file. And as you can see, um, according to the Pack File Explorer, which is showing the contents of the um, SM Tattoo folder of my Redemption directory, it is uh, showing. It is showing. Um, pretty much all of the TGA files too. So we have just converted not just the .x file, but we've converted the TGA files on over. And um, Redemption is mostly compatible with these. So um, there's gonna be very little work involved with um, making this all work. So the next step 
that is needed here is to um, load up the, the uh, soft image mod tool. So I'm going to X out of here. Now that I got a .x file, and I can also double check and make sure that this content is in fact here. So I'll say a phone booth. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So there, there is also um, several models too. Several models were converted that were into BSP files. So you got the bar stool. You got pretty much everything here that can be converted on over. Um, I could show that later, but for now, I'm going to show you how to load the SM tattoo on over here. So let's see here. We're going to load up the mod tool now. So I am going to eventually get the .x file imported. So under file and the mod tool, go to import and you go to DirectX import. Under DirectX import, um, likely going to need to do something. I think, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we need for that there. We need to now navigate using XSI mod tool to the location of the X file that we've created. And that should be in redemption, um, SM tattoo. And as you can see, the X file is right there. So I'll just double click on it. Um, and we don't need animations. Uh, animations are not necessary. They are not part of the map. So I will not make an attempt to uh, uh, import them. All right, so now that we've done this, um, it should be here when we back off a bit with the mouse. Controller that should be. Um, where are you? I guess the controls are not. Uh, I, I forgot the, most of the controls to XSI mod tool. Anyway, <laughs> it, we don't need to use them right now. We're just using its import export tool. So I'm not going to go in depth on the mod tool functions, but it is in here. Um, there is some oddities here that are sticking out. Um, during the uh, import process, um, we will likely have to fix this a little bit when we uh, when we go into embrace and get it all solidified. So let's see here. There is also the crosswalk, and we need the ex export option. And for the export option, I would say use the dot XSI <coughs> because <coughs> I noticed that uh, Milkshape does not have a dot X importer at least from what I have seen it does not have a dot X importer so we're just likely no we don't want animations um, okay well, let's uh, include the absolute or not the absolute path we do not want the absolute path um, no, I don't want to copy the files. But we want to keep the textures data in there. Um, hopefully, um, XSI module did not completely mess them up. Um, <coughs> I noticed there was some errors a while back ago. I hope they do not apply to this tutorial. I'll have to figure out something about it later on but it's it wasn't a big deal on a previous test um, so I'm just gonna go with it so I'm gonna run the okay and it's gonna it's gonna want me to um, pick a folder obviously and um, I'm gonna have to oh yes uh, get my train of thought back in order here find my way on over to games. I'm going to put this in redemption and under the project folder that we have here. All right, so um, I think what I'm going to need here is, I'm just going to keep it as mesh zero. I'm not going to fiddle with it beyond that. 
Okay, so it should be noted as a mesh zero in the uh, tattoo folder. So let's take a look here. Yes, we have a mesh zero dot XSI. And what I'm going to do is load that on up into um, Milkshake 3D. So I'm going to X out of here on the XSI or so I say soft image mod tool. Uh, no, I do not want to save it. And we're going to move on to the next step of Milkshape 3D. All right, so for Milkshape 3D, we go to File, Import, and try to find the Soft Image XSI uh, import option. And it should be like towards the bottom. And we're going to import meshes, and we're going to import materials. And from here, we're going to navigate. Now, to, let me let me backtrack here. I went, I, I clicked next to the file name. There was these arrows here, so we click those and navigate to SM Tattoo, and we're gonna, and we see our mesh zero XSI here, and we just pick that and keep those the way they are, and press OK. Now, the only major thing we need to do now is um, we're going to need to select all first off, and we're going to need to use the vertex options here for mirror front to back. We want to mirror front to back. That will fix kind of a uh, weird reverse issue that was uh, prevalent in the uh, in the export option. That's the only thing that should be a problem and it should be fixed now so now the next stage after we've mirrored the object is to export it to um, Q3 radiant map so went over to file export Q3 radiant map and we're going to navigate Okay, we don't need to navigate per se. Well, yes, we do. We need to put this in the maps folder. Um, oh, yes, I had prior done this um, earlier um, when I was doing a test. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to overwrite um, what I had in there. So I'm just, just going to start again. And um, scale options, I don't think we need those. I, I think it should work just fine the way it is. Um, so I'm just going to go OK. And now um, I'm going to X out of Milkshake 3D. <coughs> so we should have a .NET file. Typically it's been, it's overwritten. And I had to delete that backup file too, so that wasn't really needed either. So I got that cleaned up. That was from a previous uh, attempt to try this. So now that we have the smtattoo.mat file, we can we can actually jump straight into Embrace and take a look at it. Now I can tell you right off the bat that the textures are not going to be present, but there's but the reason I'm loading this first is to show you what the map is looking for when it comes to textures. So, all right. Okay, so we have, okay, we're down in the basement here. Um, also, let me double check here and make sure that the sizing is fine. If it's not, we'll. Okay, this is obviously a little smaller than it should be. It could do with being a little bigger. Yeah, it is a bit small, so I think a slight increase in the um, map size would be prudent. So. Um, let's go back a step here. I'm going to close out of here, go no, and I'm going to go back a step 
into the Milkshake 3D and we're going to import this again. XSI Mod Tool, go under Tattoo and I'm also showing you the trial and error of fixing a problem that tends to happen. So we're going to import this again. Um, we're going to do select all again and we're going under vertex, mirror front to back and we're going to run the export again this time with a scale option. So going under here I'm going to scale model size to 2000 units perhaps. That's double size. Now that should I don't know that that would make the map um, probably a little bit big, but probably not overwhelmingly big. But we'll we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. So I'm going to go back over here under the maps, back to the redemption main folder maps, and I'm going to overwrite what I just did and go OK and close out of here again and then I'm going to go into Embrace and we'll take another Yander and see if that was the right scaling. And go open. Okay, let's see here. Alright, so I'm going after we've apparently got this somewhat fixed, let's take a look here and see what the player start looks like now. Um, right, now that's apparently too big. It's apparently too big. Right, right. So, trial on air. Like I said, the empirical approach. Ha 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 ha, right. <laughs> Go back into Milkshape again and change the scaling. <laughs> Pretty much what this tutorial is turning into. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. Anyway, all right, trying this again. Import and Vertes. M mirror it. Oh, what? Gotta select it first. Da da da. Mirror it and then run export once again and I'm going to try something different I'm going to just keep the scale at 1000 maybe maybe scale model size and I'm going to keep it at 1000 and see what that does okay so All right. Scale model size. Okay, so we can do that. If this still doesn't appear to do a whole lot, I may scale it um, using the standard scaling options. Wait. Oh yeah, I, I was uh, exiting out and. Uh, Apparently I uh, was trying to save and realized I didn't want to save. So anyway, let's try this one more time and hopefully this isn't too bad. Okay, so all right, I'm trying to figure out here. Okay, so it's back to being rather small again, isn't it? That is a little small, but how small? Actually, that's not too bad. Hold on. Actually, that might be... Yeah. That is actually... Scaled a little better now. That is... That is certainly better than what it was. So keeping it at 1,000 units seems to work. Um, to the most part. So, now to figure out these textures. I know that's probably been bothering people looking at it. It's like, oh my god, there's no textures. What am I going to do? Do not fear. You can get this fixed. Anyway, 
looks like a number of objects were interesting. Okay. Okay, um, I'm also going to take a look at the surface here and see what the surface is. Okay, so this surface is still a no icon surface. Um, I recall this happened uh, before, and the floor is also a no icon surface. So, okay, just to recap what I just did here, I press the S key and I am right clicking the surfaces so I can figure out what textures are assigned to what brushes. So to do that you can just right click in the uh, camera uh, view, right click on it and it will show you where it's looking for the texture and why it's not showing. Essentially it's showing what textures it's trying to load and apparently uh, this keeps trying to load a no icon texture. That is interesting, interesting. So I'm going to have to change that eventually. So let me get the uh, textures installed. We'll, we'll cover that in this tutorial, how to install the textures. So let's X out of here. No, I don't want to save just yet. So now to introduce you to the NAM tool and to convert the files on over to redemption. So first things first, um, just a quick review. There is a limit, so just a quick quote pro, I should say. There, there is a limit to the size of the TGAs that the engine can handle, and that is uh, a maximum of 512 by 512 resolution. Now, typically, you can tell, um, there, there's a quick way to tell whether a TGA is using the maximum, and that is by its uh, size. Um, so if you see a TGA file um, that is within 1,025 kilobytes, then that is usually a quick way to say, oh, well, that texture is fine. That is within the limit of, uh, of uh, Vampire of the Masquerade Redemption. Now, to verify this, you can run a program like the GIMP. And I'm just going to drag and drop it into the GIMP. And there you go. Up here on the top, it says its resolution is 512 by 512. So it's good. It's good to go. It should be fine. Shouldn't blow up anything. Now, on the other hand, we see a texture here that is over 4 megs. That is obviously too big. So what we're going to need to do is uh, <laughs> load up the GIMP again. I just closed it for some reason, so I need to load it up again. And I'm going to need to resize this TGA file. Yeah, see that? It is 1024 by 1024 resolution. That is too big. We need to lower this. So I'm going to lower it to 512 by 512. So I'm going to go under image, scale image, and I'm going to put 512 in here and it's locked. So it's it, it has the lock width with height. So it's going to go 512, 512 and scale it. And then I'm going to export it. Use the export option. Now, of course, there's this easy peasy uh, overwrite option, but I'm just going to go over here with the export just to be thorough and show you why you should use this option over just the quick overwrite option. You want to make sure that the format of the TGA file is correct. So what we're going to do is we don't have to change the name or anything, so it's already a TGA format. We just click the export key, I mean export button, and it's giving us an option to replace. Yes, we want to replace it. And here is very important. You need to turn off the RLE compression. So click that off. And that's pretty much it. All you have to do is click that off and press export. So now, no, we don't want to save. We'll just X out of here. And notice that the size of the ceiling is now a uh, 1,025 kilobyte. So that is good. We want that. So next step here is to take all of these um, TGA files. I'm going to quickly just grab all the TGA files here, and I'm just going to throw them into the SM Tattoo section. And I'm just going to 
um, remove the .x file, we don't need that. And uh, that should be it. We just have TTA files. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to uh, copy it over to the materials folder of the main Vampire the Masquerade Redemption directory. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to right click, paste it, the copy of the SM tattoo. And then I'm going to run the NAM tool. So here is an introduction to the NAM tool. So you just, um, when, you, when you download it for the first time, it's going to be missing a DLL. You're going to get a DLL error on newer operating systems. So I included in this package, this, is this, this should be how it looks when you download it off of the uh, emods.net open non-development section. Um, it should have a readme and it should tell you how to install it into the, the DLL. So it's typically something that's going to go into your Windows System32 or some equivalent folder depending on your operating system. So when you get it all running, you should get this interface. So from here, you'll have to navigate using the program to wherever you installed um, your Vampire the Masquerade Redemption uh, game. And then go under Materials, and then go under SM Tattoo. At least in my case, it's SM Tattoo. And we're going to select everything. I'm going to hold down Shift and select from the top. So I click the top one and press Shift, click the bottom one, and it selected them all and you can verify that this is about to create NAM files by hitting the add NAM file here and then looking at what happens in the directory and there we are we have NAM files and if you open them with the notepad you'll notice it says texture blah 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 it says the texture name and basically this tells the Nod engine that uh, it needs to load this file and this is actually a requirement you need these files for the maps to know what to load because it uses NAM files to assign TTA files. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to copy all these and we need to duplicate them into the main materials folder. This is not required for distribution but this is required for um, for mapping with Embrace. Embrace requires this. Um, so that you can get the proper synchronization of all the textures and you don't get any uh, you don't get anything hanky when you when you finish this up and you uh, make a knob file out of it um, I think all you need is the NAM files um, inside the SM tattoo and I think the TGA files would go out here in the materials uh, directory so um, I think that's how it goes so all you would need is the TGAs out here and the NAM files in here, I think. One or the other. Um, it might be the other way around. It might You might need to put the TGA files in here and the NAM files out there. <laughs> yeah, I. Um, it's been a while. But I know when you distribute this, you do not need to duplicate everything because it makes it, it obviously makes the download size rather big when you have multiple TGAs of the same thing inside and outside of a folder. All right, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste the copies. So that means the TGA files and the NAM files are going to be both inside the materials folder and the materials SM tattoo folder. So that pretty much covers the installation of the materials. That should be it. So when we load up Embrace again and then go into the map, we should now see the textures. And there we are. And notice that, yes, and I do see that some texture alignments may be needed and most certainly some textures will also 
be uh, needed as well. Um, I'm just going to set this floor to match the floor of the basement. Uh, so I'm gonna just quickly, I'm just gonna quickly select this brush and then I'm just gonna right click on the brush below here and that sets it to match. So that was just a quick way of setting it up. Um, the next thing I think I will do is a sign. I'm just gonna sign that over here too. Just, just, mm, just go gung ho with it. Just to quickly set it up. Um, I'm also gonna check around and make sure there are no other missing textures. That's probably an advisable thing for everyone to do. anything missing from here okay it looks like it's to the most part just fine okay um, yes so now the next step here is we're going to have to solidify these brushes we're gonna have to make them solids because right now they are just um, strange entities They're just entities so um, the first thing we're going to do is go into um, selection and we're going to select all things and inside the build uh, screen we're going to right click and we're going to choose ungroup entity and we're going to have to do this several times I'm going to have to keep doing this keep doing it do it again do it again again and we're just going to have to keep doing this until all the red turns to white all the red to white. Now, the, um, notice that I'm also being very careful not to move any of these things around because the way it was converted, it creates kind of an excess amount of uh, polys. There's one thing you'll notice <clears throat> is there's more polys than there should be. And embrace um, kind of sort of doesn't like it per se. You may need to clean up certain things like the floor, perhaps. But overall, um, did I just stretch something? I did, didn't I? I better not have. I don't think I did. Checking. Okay, it should be fine. I think it should be fine. Okay. Anyway, um, first things uh, we may want to do is. Uh, I'm just going to keep that solid for now because I'm not going to cover anything fancy with that just yet. I know it's probably a glass case. And actually, I could. Actually, I'll do that. I'll just do it. So we have to select this and turn it into glass. At least it, as much of it as we can select here. Um, okay, so that's definitely more polys than it should have. Quite frankly, that is way more than it should have. I think that's everything under the sun, to the most part. What is this in here? I think that's also needed to be selected too. So I think there's also some things inside here that also need to be selected. Um, so I, I am kind of doing something a little weird, um, but. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna to go to Surface Inspector by pressing S. I'm gonna change it to no CSD, no light map, and I'm going to make it transparent. <coughs> Actually, I might wanna make it more transparent. Yeah, I'm gonna use both 66 and uh, 33. Okay, so. Look a little odd. Yeah. And in fact, you might even want to go as far as, depending on uh, your preferences, just delete, uh, just delete it. Um, but anyway, another thing that's required here is you're going to need to um, make this surface walkable. That is definitely something needed. You're also going to need sectors. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to add sectors here pretty soon. 
Going to need sectors. Without sectors, uh, the map will most certainly crash because these are kind of weirdly established um, polys, to say the least. Uh, this is kind of a little out of the ordinary for. Um, in fact, something like this probably um, this particular configuration might do with a deletion might do with deleting that because it could be a problem um, later on because that's kind of a weird uh, arrangement of polys and that could cause a problem uh, to say the least. Um, I'm going to try moving it just to see if it crashes anything. No, apparently not. Okay, so it's apparently it's not completely broke. Okay, did I break it by moving it? Nope. Okay, apparently it's still fine for the most part. All right, so I wrote, clicked on it, and I'm gonna set this to walkable. I'm just gonna get the top area walkable. I'm gonna create a light here and a player start. And um, uh, let's see here, let's get a light. Just a basic light. Doesn't have to be fancy. I'll get a light, uh, I'll get a couple lights actually. I'll get a, couple, I'll get a light over here, and then I will press spacebar, duplicate the light. Okay the light over here and another light in the other room um, and I'm also probably gonna want to check for bogus brushes during export if there is a bogus brush you want to be very careful um, I'm not going to export just yet we need to have um, sectors most certainly need to have sectors especially for a map like this it is it is a must you, you can't avoid it there's no way so let's uh, create a big giant brush here. At least I'm going to do that. And it's going to cut into here. And oh yeah, so I'm going to make it big enough to encompass the floor and the ceiling. And I am going to right click and um, choose the sector option. So we got a sector now, our first sector. Um, we're also going to need another sector. I'm likely going to need a sector for this map. It is, it is not an optional thing. If you try to run this without sectors, it could be very problematic. So let's get another sector in this room. Try to get this um, down the center. And then I'm going to choose a sector perhaps yes I'm gonna choose sector I'm going to create another one I'm going to have this one preferably connect with the other one so you got to make sure your sectors are connecting to the most part and this one might have to extend out a bit to cover the um, the window rendering so I'm going to sector that um, I may want to uh, extend this too, so it will render back there. Oh yeah, likely gonna need to extend that too, so it can render the end of those windows. Um, we also um, will need to extend this on over to, let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna extend this a little bit further over here. And then I'm gonna make another one. Preferably extending this whole area here. I'll just extend through there. And then extend it down all the way to the bottom of the stairs and just have that one big sectored area. Um, hopefully that should be fine. And um, that's all I'm going to do for sectoring right now. I'm just going to do the top area. I'm not really going to do the bottom area just yet. So I really want to see what this looks like. And I need a player start here too. I'm also going to go into layers and options and kind of hide the sectors for now. So pressing L and then it brings up the screen and then you choose the tab for view options and then you can turn off the sectors, at least for now. And then I'm going to go into player start and I'm going to spawn the player start here. Um, 
oh, player star kind of went below. So I'm going to move him above and make sure he's touching the top of the floor there. And by comparison, yes, this map um, might be bigger than usual. But that's good because you um, you want the maps to be a little bit bigger um, in Redemption than they were in uh, Bloodlines because you're not playing a first-person uh, shooter. You're playing a third-person uh, uh point and click game so um, extra camera space is uh, definitely desired so a bigger map is a good thing not a bad thing per se um, and uh, we're gonna also need to do some extra texture alignments too um, I'm going to go I'm gonna press uh, control shift and left click on the surface here left click on this surface okay I'm gonna left click on the surface that goes from top to bottom and then I'm gonna press control F right right um, I think that should be it right control F should do it I think it only works on a square though um, yeah it's supposed to be a texture fit option, but apparently um, because it's an awkward shaped uh, surface, um, the fit uh, doesn't appear, apparently work. So you're going to have to apparently manually do stuff with these uh, rolls. Um, yeah, uh, so that could be a little bit on the problematic side. As you can see, there is definitely a lot of odd... Um, surfaces here some seriously odd surfaces um, you might have to do some mapping to actually fix these really odd surfaces uh, yeah possibly have to do that possibly okay well or you can just call it good <laughs> it depends it depends on your preference how much work you want to put into it um, so anyway, let's uh, let's do an export here and see what happens. I'm going to do a full export that includes sectors. I'm also going to add some ambience. I'm going to add uh, some darker uh, gray, and I'm going to set it to 20, and then we'll run an export here. Okay, so brush after clip. So we got some bogus brushes here, and that's probably because of the really odd. Uh, Really odd uh, poly configuration from the export. All right, so I'm going to um, I'm going to have to run this separately. So um, here I'm going to have to shut off Fraps for a moment here, and then I'm going to uh, load the map um, and take a look. All right, so. I have loaded up the game here. Um, yeah, I turned off the music uh, so I can be heard better. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, apparently, I had to do some configurations and fraps to uh, switch over to the game itself so I can do this seamlessly. So I'm going to go into single player after running the uh, Embrace uh, map loader. I'm going to go to new game and I'm going to go OK. And as I can see, the map appears to be loaded, and uh, the sectors um, sectors appear to have done their work, to the most part. Um, there's apparently some odd behavior here. Um, I don't know what's the behavior I see here. Kind of indicates that there's a transparent uh, texture, perhaps, that is not set to. Um, it's not set properly. Um, so it kind of seems to me like uh, some work will need to be done in this area to fix whatever's going on there. But as you can see, um, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad at all. Um, the textures could use a little more alignment. And uh, like I was saying earlier, um, it is highly recommended that you rebuild certain things. Now on large maps, 
this may not be too practical. Um, you may just have to um, consider doing the uh, texture editing before um, ungrouping the entities, perhaps. Um, that could make it easier to do that type of work um, without the ungrouping. Now, apparently, Fraps um, is kind of acting kind of funny to me. Um, at least to me, it's acting a little funny. It's kind of lagging for no apparent reason. Um, I was tempted to record this in the uh, Shadow Play by NVIDIA, um, and I think I will be doing that more often from here on out. And as you can see, there's a there's kind of a hall of me. There's effect going on out here, um, which seems to indicate to me that these. Uh, these windows might actually be uh, um, transparent, and they might be transparent. So they're they're trying to render a world that doesn't exist beyond this window. So it's creating the uh, the whole of mirrors effect. So um, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be too difficult to pull this off for individuals looking to this tutorial um, in an attempt to convert uh, Bloodlines maps over to Redemption. And I'm hoping I made this as easy as I possibly can for you. Though, um, as you can see, uh, a little conversion work will be needed. I, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't going to be perfect. <clears throat> and I'm hoping you weren't expecting it to be a perfect and seamless port. Um, I'm certainly hoping that you understand that this is a this is going to take a little bit of work to get it to work right. Now, uh, as you can see, I'm only staying on the top floor because I only rendered the top floor area. Um, I could go as far as to go to the bottom floor, but I I would have to do the stairs and. Uh, I get the feeling that uh, that would be a uh, very fun-ish. Um, one thing I've noticed, if you were to go back into Milkshake 3D and play with the scaling some more, I, I found out when I set it to scaling to 3000 on a prior test, excuse me, um, when I set it to 3000, um, all the textures looked like they were properly aligned. The, the textures looked perfect. Um, so apparently the size of the map has a lot to do with the alignment of the textures. Um, so the larger the map, the more properly aligned the textures will become, probably reflective of the enormous size of the textures. So you'll, you'll likely need to use the surface inspector and do quite a bit of tweaking to the textures. And um, to make things easier for yourself, you would probably want to... Um, perhaps maybe rebuild some of these walls. Like for example, um, you know, delete this and just replace it with a plain square one poly wall. Um, because, um, uh, sorry about the train, the damn train, it keeps popping up. Anyway, <laughs> that's my signature sound. When you listen to my tutorials, uh, there will always be a train somewhere in the background, eventually popping up, letting everyone know it is here, and it's going to be very intrusive. Anyway, um, I'm hoping you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm kind of going on and on, but I'm really um, hoping that individuals will make an attempt to do what the upstart uh, started. Um, upstart began this, and with this tutorial, I hope someone will finish it. And I will do what I can to help in this regard. And uh, to uh, provide as many resources as I can, when I can. So, um, I think that this concludes the tutorial. If you have questions, feel free to pop them in the YouTube video below or um, visit my forum at emods.net or um, uh, pop into Planet Vampire, perhaps. Um, so, um, I guess that would conclude this tutorial. I'm hoping that uh, we see some 
some goodies to come from this eventually um, as you tweak and you figure out how to uh, come up with a method perhaps that would optimize and synchronize the process of conversion perhaps um, so I'm hoping I see something from this and uh, good luck to anyone who tries to pull this off I will be leaving you to it so have a good year, a good new year, over and out.